Hey guys, it's Rod with Civil Advantage Firearms Training here. Uh, today we're going to do a quick review of the law for safe and what I would call legal storage of non-restricted firearms. So a couple of quick points I want to make before we get to the four legal ways that you can store your non-restricted firearm here in Canada. First thing is when we talk about secure, um, secure locking devices, we're talking about a trigger lock or a cable lock. And if you've taken the firearm safety course with me, you probably already know that I'm kind of a big fan of cable locks. Um, for one, cable locks stop the action from functioning a lot better than trigger locks. Uh, in, from, the, from the perspective of, let me demonstrate this for you. If I had a trigger lock on this shotgun, what could I still do with it? Well, I can load the magazine to capacity. I can cycle the action. I can chamber around and maybe, just maybe, if the lock is, is loose enough, I can yank the lock down and discharge the firearm with the lock, right? Um, I've had a gun where uh, the lock itself, the trigger lock that I used to use, just didn't have that last click and it was loose on there. And I actually was able to pull the trigger with the lock. That's how I know that. Uh, with a cable, completely different. With a cable, I put this up here through the action and that's it. What can I do? I can't close the action. I can't cycle it. I can't really chamber around. Maybe I could wiggle one in there, but it doesn't matter. I can't even close the action on it. So there's no way I could ever fire it. Um, the other thing I like about cables is if I lose my keys, I just cut this darn thing right off there and I'm out five bucks. If I lose my keys with a trigger lock, I'm, I'm in trouble. I'm going to have to drill that thing out and work on it and, and whatnot. Um, you also have an option to get the uh, combination locks too. So what if you had amnesia and then you're in trouble again. But uh, anyways, so that's uh, secure locking devices. And the, the, the role of the secure locking device is to delay access. They're not to prevent access permanently. You know, can someone cut this lock off? Yeah. What am I trying to do with, with this lock? I'm trying to stop someone from grabbing my gun and being able to automatically just, just jump on it and fire it, right? So that's, uh, that's what we're trying to do with that. Anyway. Um, also, I use a term when I talk about the safe storage uh, of uh, firearms, I use a term under the bed. And when I say under the bed, what I'm actually talking about is you can put the gun wherever you want. So that's, I use the, the term, uh, oh yeah, unloaded, throw it under the bed. So just wanted to give you a heads up on that. All right, the four legal ways you can store these non-restricted firearms, starting with, with uh, the easiest and least expensive. I've got my non-restricted firearm, I make sure that it's unloaded. I put a secure locking device on this thing and I slide it under the bed. So under the bed means under the bed, of course, under my pillow, you know, sleeping like this, you know, that's okay. Uh, top shelf of the closet, doesn't matter. You can store it pretty much anywhere. Uh, the one stipulation if you're going to use that method is it has to be not within easy access to ammunition. So what does that mean? It means just get the ammo out of the room. The safest way that you can avoid any kind of firearm, unsafe firearm charge, uh, unsafe storage, I should say, um, the, the best way to avoid that is lock up your ammunition. You're not legally obligated to lock up ammunition, but just lock it up anyway, you know, and then you're, you're never going to get, have a problem. And you know what? When, when people that aren't familiar with ammunition get a hold of ammunition, they can do some pretty stupid things with it. So it's probably best that you, uh, it's not uh, with an easy access to anybody, much less the firearm. So method number two. Method number two is unloaded, of course. Can't have a loaded firearm in an area where it cannot be legally and safely discharged. So your firearm's unloaded, you put it in a locked case. So I got a gun case here, firearm's unloaded, goes in the case, no secure locking device required. Ammo in the case is okay, lock the case. Okay, so that's, that's a method for you. So some folks go, well, if you don't need a secure locking device, why would they let you put the ammo inside the case? It's because the case is supposed to be locked. And as I, as I just mentioned, you're not legally obligated to lock ammunition. So I guess, I can't pretend to know what legislators were thinking when they uh, created the Firearms Act. Don't get me started. But um, nonetheless, I guess what they were thinking was, if you're not legally obligated to lock ammunition anyway, they'd rather it be locked, in, even if it's locked inside the case with a gun. And to me, that makes sense. I'm, I'm okay with that. So that was uh, method number two. Method number three is to remove the bolt or bolt carrier out of the firearm. Um, now, the, if, you, if you use that method, it's the, you have the same requirements as just the secure locking device, meaning the firearm is unloaded, I remove the bolt or the bolt carrier, I take the, gun, the rest of the gun and those pieces and I throw them under the bed in a big 
pile right? and just toss them under there. Ammunition can be nowhere near the firearm. So I'm not sure that there's any instructor out there that's advocating using that method. It's not a very good method. Um, and the reason from my perspective is, is that uh, anyone can grab your gun and the, and the pieces and off they go. Still, they still got to get your gun, right? So don't, uh, don't get me wrong there. But for me personally, I like to keep my guns all together and in working order all the time. Just my thing. Don't ask me why, but uh, I like to make sure I can shoot these guns whenever I want them. The other thing is, is what if I go out to the bush, I drive a couple hours, we've got a big fire going, got the lawn chairs out, the satellite radio, we're having a great time. I'm like, okay, let's shoot some guns. And I look and, oh, okay, well, my bolt and bolt carrier are at home. So I guess I'm not shooting at least this gun today. So keep your guns all together. Um, you know you have method number one, you have method number two, which is great. A case like this, man, I paid 30 bucks for these cases at, uh, at a big box store. So I'm not going to mention which one, but uh, really inexpensive. So do the locking case thing. Um, and the fourth legal way to store your firearm is uh, in a gun safe. So the gun safe method is unloaded in the safe, lock the safe. No secure locking de device required on the firearm itself. Ammunition in the case, in the safe, pardon me, is okay. So the, the gun safe is like the trump card because you, you know, I'll do another video for restricted firearms, but um, with restricted, it's the same thing. Unloaded in the safe. Ammo in the safe is okay. So the, the gun safe is a trump card. You can store it any way you want, just as long as it's not loaded in the safe. And of course, a gun safe is the best way to store your stuff because it's kind of hard for people to get in the safe and you get to get exempted from the secure locking device and stuff. So loaded magazines, if it's a magazine fed firearm, loaded magazines in the safe, that's okay. Firearms, no secure locking devices, that's okay. So I always recommend the safe. You can get a good 16 gun safe at like Costco or someplace uh, for 350 bucks with an electronic lock no less. So if you're worried about getting your guns fast, live in a remote area or whatever, and you need you know firearms for wildlife protection, you can actually keep them in the safe and you can get them as fast as you can press four numbers. So, and then you never have to worry about them uh, walking off, which is, uh, which is good. The, uh, you know, you don't wanna lose your guns and, and have someone steal them. So, and the safe is the best place for them. So those are your four methods. Um, if you have any questions, you can feel free to put them below. If I can't get to these questions, sometimes the legal questions take a lot of effort to, <laughs> to uh, create, you know, provide an explanation. If you're one of the subscribers, you're a gun owner, you know what you're talking about, feel free to answer other people's questions or I'll, I'll try to get to them as quick as I can. Uh, hopefully this was helpful. Uh, if you want to follow us on Twitter, you can, at CivilAdvantage1, or you can find us on the web at www.civiladvantage.com. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.